welcome to a brand new video. Today we're going to do a makeup effects video about something that I'm really late to the party on. Like I'm really, really late to the game. I recently, since I have time in the quarantina, Miss Corona, making me stay inside and bake, eat food, get fat, and watch horror movies. My favorite, ghost and horror movies. I recently saw the movie. Crimson Pink. I know, finally, where have I been? But I was hoping it was a Victorian era movie that was secretly about the coming of age and periods. But it's not. It's not a metaphor for that. It is intense. The plot wasn't crazy. Like, there were so many people that all looked the same. They all looked Caucasian and wore rusty colors and like flouncy dresses. Honestly though, the aesthetic, I was here for it. But I've never screamed so much at a girl who is a main character or people in a movie in my entire life. I felt like those annoying people that you hate at the movie theaters, but overall the movie, the plot was great. I would watch it again just for those exquisite dresses and settings. So I'm going to rant about this movie. If you haven't seen it yet, we are going to drop all the plots, spoil everything. So. It's not my fault if you haven't seen it, it's been out forever. And we're gonna turn into this ghost from the movie. This red ghost woman. This one that looks complicated and might dye my skin for days even though I have things to do. I might stain my skin forever. So let's get started. First of all, I need to put my hair in a wig cap. So let's get her situated. Wig caps always look like stockings from your goth sister that you stole from her room, which is these ones. Why do I make things more complicated for myself than they have to be? I don't have those crazy contact lenses like they do in the movie, so I'm gonna paint my eyes on. It's gonna be intense and crazy. It's one of those makeups where I'm so nervous and scared to do it that I'm starting at two in the morning with a cup of coffee in me because I've been up all day like, should I do this? I'm scared, I'm nervous, can I do this? It's intense, it's crazy. Will I be able to successfully do this? I have to actually try it, but I'm so scared, so we're doing it. I gotta delete my eyebrows because this ghost person does not have eyebrows. So I have to delete those babies. And I gotta powder down these eyebrows. I'm gonna do about three or four layers, you know the drill. So we flatten them down so that it looks like we actually have no eyebrows whatsoever. So let's start off with the plot of this movie. Oh my gosh. It starts off with this girl who's super privileged in a rich family, but of course, she has a sad backstory. Her mother dies of an illness and she's haunted by this ghost of her mother that she thinks is her mother and she writes stories about ghosts. And if you get the gist, she's probably writing it about the ghost of this, I wish I could turn into that ghost if I could get my hands on some black lace. But this ghost who you think is her mother is super creepy and haunts her to be honest it didn't scare me that much maybe because i was expecting it but she thinks she's an amazing writer and her father is like a high up figure and her father has this guy that he approves of who's extremely good looking who has a great career hot, sexy, smart, and he studies ghosts too. But she doesn't tell him that she sees ghosts, that they share a similar background knowledge of ghosts. It's like, girl, what are you doing? She's just doing all the wrong moves. Then this guy comes into town. It annoys me so bad when people are not only clueless and dumb, but they don't care to share knowledge and become smarter. But then if she's a good writer, sometimes it's the situation where if you're good at something, sometimes like other things in your life are lacking because you're putting all your energy into one thing and not, as this is my theory, you're putting all your eggs in one basket. So it's like, sometimes you'll be a great scientist and you'll be dirty and not know how to cook and clean for yourself. You know what I mean? So I feel like that's going for her, but I feel like I'm giving her excuses because she's so privileged little white girl and so just gullible and not bright that all the red flags are thrown at her at once and she does not see it. First red flag is this guy comes into town. You know those guys that are too, they think they got game and they're trying too hard and they're being too fake and you're like, wow sir, you need to cool it because I don't know about you, I just met you and you want me to fall in love with you. You're giving me the signs that you want me to fall in love with you, but I just met you. That's what this guy, Tom Hiddleston, is that his name? 
I don't know. I'm not attracted to him. He's not my cup of tea. He's like a cup of sour milk to me. But he comes along, Mr. Golf Vampire Boy, and is like, wow, I love your writing. You're so great. And he's doing this because she he wants to get into business with her father because he's a higher up man. It's like, sir, I could smell what you're cooking from a mile away, which is lies and weirdness. I'm trying to slant my face this way and it's turning out to be super difficult. Who knew? Why did I decide to do this makeup? It's so freaking hard. She has a gash in her forehead and I'm gonna wear a red wig that the gash won't go into, but I make everything complicated for myself, like I said. <laughs> Anyways. So it turns out that this guy that's trying to get into business selling red clay with her dad, like she is so charmed by his fakeness that like her father sniffs it, sees it like, hey girl, I know what you're doing. You're my daughter. I love you. Um, this guy's bad news, so don't mess with him. I know you like kind of fall in love with him, but please don't. And she, you know those girls who like their father approves of someone that's good for them and it's like I don't I'm not here for arranged marriages but her daughter her father's actually looking out for her and he approves of someone who's so darn good for her it's ridiculous but she still wants to go for this creepy emo guy and meets his sister who's double as creepy triple as emo I'm not having emo as a negative connotation here, but there's a difference between being weird, being quirky and cute, and being absolutely insane. And this girl, when you meet her, I don't remember her name because I didn't care to remember it, she's insane. She starts collecting dead butterflies on the floor and rubbing it on this girl's skin. And I'm like, if you do that to me, I will not associate with you, your family, anyone you associate with, any of your friends, or anyone that touches you. Because that's just weird. On a bad level. Another red flag headed your way. And it's at this point, I'm like, I'm here for the aesthetic. I'm here for these outfits. I'm here for the set design. What I'm not here for is this plot, and it better be getting good. And not only is this girl's dad super smart, trying to help her in every way possible, which is like help I wish I had. Like, I wish my parents had great catches for me, but they just didn't want me to, like, fall in love or anything to do with dating for a long time, I feel like. And this girl's dad is picking out gems for her. And she's like, Daddy, no, I want this guy who you hate. <laughs> it goes so far as to, like, everyone in town doesn't like her for some apparent reason. I think it's because she's pretty, white, privileged, and her dad's rich. And all these other women in town are jealous of her. That's usually how it goes, especially around your age. I feel like she was like 19, 18, barely even early 20s. But you know, that was like 18, back in 1800s or whenever the setting is. That's like considered you're getting ripe of age and getting ready to get married and breed, to be honest. Which I'm not here for, but the 1800s was. So, her dad's like trying to talk her into going to this ball with that kid that he likes who's a freaking doctor who likes to study ghosts. I'm like, excuse me, match made in heaven, bring him over to here. So she doesn't want to go to this party, this social event that will help her, her social like career. Like I don't like going to parties, so I understand, but sometimes it really does help, especially back in the old days when you don't have a freaking telephone and you need to talk to other people. It does help, probably back then. But no, she's like, no. And then that creepy dude that her dad hates comes to her house, not to talk to her dad, but to talk to her. And when his sister was shoving dead butterflies in her face. They were already making a plan for him to marry her. So he has this huge ring that he takes from his sister wanting to marry her and she doesn't know it. She thinks she's just going to a party. Her dad sees this dude at the party and is like, no, no sir. And tells this guy, listen, you need to leave town. I'm giving you money for you and your sister, your creepy, sister who collects dead bugs and wants to hang out with my daughter. You want to bang my daughter and your sister's creepy. You guys could take the first train home and leave and I'll give you money for it. And he's like, deal. So he embarrasses the living daylights out of the girl he's in love with, the dumb girl. 
in front of people saying how that's when you you get to someone really bad is you make fun of their passions their dreams their craft and their career so he's like you know what you're not really a good writer because apparently she gave him like his her rough drafts to edit he's like this isn't even good you actually suck and she's like oh my gosh my hopes and dreams and my dream boat of a man doesn't believe in me so i must suck so she believes in his act and then while she's finding out that her dad paid him off to leave, her dad mysteriously gets brutally murdered, head bashed into a sink, and no one knows how he got murdered. Well, I'm sure you could guess who murdered him. Because there are people that didn't want to leave and he paid them off. Anyways, I look like a tomato. This is the point where I'm regretting all of my life's decisions. You know how many Zoom meetings I have coming up? Actually, quite a bit. So this better come off. Corey, my boyfriend, has already been helping me make up lies if I have to go to a Zoom meeting and my skin still dyed red. And I'd be like, oh, I was laying outside in the sun and I just fell asleep and got burnt. Oh, I cosplayed as a stop sign yesterday. Oh, I was testing out a makeup to be Mr. Krabs for Halloween since this pandemic is gonna take forever. So I was testing out Halloween stuff already. Back to this movie. So she somehow finds out that her dad paid off the guy she really loves. I don't know how you fall in love with someone in like a couple day time period or a week time period. It takes longer than that for me personally. But she apparently loves this guy and finds out that her dad paid him off to leave. So she finds the train station he's at and just so happens he didn't leave yet. And he talks her into marrying him. How are you gonna leave your house with not knowing where your dad is? She hasn't figured out that her dad's dead yet. But when she comes back home to gather her stuff to get married to this dude, she finds out her dad's dead and still wants to see his face even though it's, it's unrecognizable. It's so there's a hole in the middle of it. And I don't know about y'all, if my dad just died or a close family member just passed away, getting married would be the last absolute further thing on another island on another planet in my mind so she still marries the weirdo guy with the even weirdoist sister brains she has none and this my friends is where i sh tell you to listen to red flags it's right here on my face and know when someone's manipulating you because manipulation and selfishness goes together like peanut butter and jelly, ham and Swiss, like Billie Eilish and baggy clothes. It just goes together. It works. Selfishness and manipulation. And that's today's The More You Know class of the cat. So another red flag that happened, she goes to this mansion when she got married. He had this creepy mansion that was like the walls looked like they were bleeding because it was on this island, not island, hill that was filled with this clay that his family has had for years in this creepy business of selling clay that they unearth. And so it's like under the mansion, under the ground, coming up in these weird devices and in the walls. So the walls look like they're actually bleeding. While there's always snow coming from the middle of this creepy mansion that is so terrible. It looks like dandruff just fallen from the sky in the middle of the mansion. I'm all into haunted mansions, but as an aesthetic from afar, would not live in it ever in my life. Because the amount of repairs most mansions that are old are, this one has even more. The water when she runs the bath is like toxic liquid sludge. It is like hot cocoa mixed with poo it looks absolutely horrendous it looks like those one star review motels and things that people were doing to get viral on youtube not too long ago before miss rona hit at first i was like how is it be poor and then rich to get this mansion but no this mansion's been in his family so long that his dead mother's portrait looks horrendous and creepy on top of it i don't like to say that about old people but it looks creepy. But get this, when she's seeing 
the ghost in her home before this creepy mansion she lived in when she was living with her father. So when he was alive, she had that ghost of her dead mother following her throughout the house and it was warning her, do not go to Crimson Peak. So when he takes her to this mansion, one of his servant people is like, oh, you guys been married for a long time. She's like, oh no, we've only been married for um, 24 hours. And she didn't pick up on that red flag. Like, why would my husband's servant be like, oh, you guys aren't newlyweds, you've been married forever? Because it's not like she lost her memory all of a sudden. So that was a red flag. And this dog came along that was just there and she just adopted it and he acted like he didn't know what that dog, it's just weird, all kinds of weirdness. His sister had this weird creepy thing where she never wanted them away from her. She wanted them like at the mansion at all times. When you move into someone after you get married to them and they want to move in with their family, I'm sorry, but sometimes that's a red flag. Because there's a difference between being close with your family and like too close to where it's like there's mental illness going on there, there's manipulation going on there. Even though they're family, there might be someone using someone. There's That's not with every family, but with this family, it stands true. And I still look crazy, man. So as soon as she runs her tar weird bath because the plumbing in this place is so bad, she starts seeing another ghost. This one's different than the ghost that was at our other house. No longer is the cool creepy ghost that looks like Helena from an MCR band that was her mother that had like the black, a gorgeous black lace veil. It's this new ghost that has like a gash in her head and she's gonna look like what I'm trying to turn into right now. She's cool looking, but she's not chill. She has no chill zone. And it scares her, of course. Who wouldn't it scare? But she's so chill about these ghosts, it's kind of ridiculous. I'm like, I would be so much more scared than you're being about ghosts. I like how she just like, she has no life experience. She's been living in that nice place with her father. And like, she just moves in with anyone and falls in love with them as soon as they meet him. I just, I just don't understand this girl, man. She's an odd one. I'm just doing some contouring. Like honestly, this movie with this girl and her experience, she's starting to make me think that you shouldn't pick your movies, novels you read, books, music, is weird and complicated as you should your men. That's why I'm with the guy I'm with. He's simple, I understand him, he's not super violent towards me. He doesn't have like a crazy backstory that's complicated and riddled with a lot of stuff. He's super easy to read. You should pick your guys like that because this guy, who man, he was a gym. So she starts like feeling not so good and the sister and the guy starts giving her this tea. But here's my thing. If I'm with someone who I met a few days ago or a couple weeks, it doesn't matter, a month. I wouldn't be drinking stuff from people I just met unless they maybe drink it first. That's a new rule that you should have once you watch this movie. Because every time they're drinking this tea together, sh she's the only one that drinks it, not the actual people serving it. And that's a total red flag, kids. I'm deleting some of the height of my shoulders to make her head look bigger. You know what I mean? So since she sees ghosts, she's like clairvoyant, clairaudient, all of the clairs. That means that she sees ghosts, can communicate with ghosts. She starts trying to investigate around this creepy house, right? Because the sister's acting weird and she's actually just finally getting some sense at this part in the movie. So she notices this key on the sister's master key ring. If there's master keys to your house and there's only one person that isn't you in the house that has the master keys, don't, don't trust, just trust no one if this movie t in me teaches you anything. Once people have a section of the house, they're like, don't go down there, but you actually like kind of live there. Don't trust that person and don't trust that house. Like why is this person having a don't go down there. I don't trust people that have that in their house. Because down there, she finally goes down there and it's like these weird things that look like wells of clay. And she doesn't see it, but you find out that there's dead bodies in there and she finds this trunk with someone's name on it. She sees that, that one of the master skeleton keys that the sister has goes to that trunk because they have the same name on it. So she opens up the trunk and finds out 
that there was another woman that lived there and there was a kid that was there that he might have been married to. So she investigates, finds these envelopes in the trunk with all these women's names on it. So she's getting smart and she starts playing CDs and stuff, not CDs, what? This is the 1800s. Like these recording recorders. They're like these wax cylinders back in the day that had recordings on them. She starts playing those and finds out that the tea that they're serving her is poisoned and they're trying to get her money that her father's gonna give her because she has no more family so her father left her all this money because he was rich and he died and it was in his will and testament since she was the only living family member of her father and left in her family. So she's like, oh snap, I'm in big trouble. Has he been, he's been killing off his, his wives and I'm his new wife. And these ghosts still haunt her Oh, and one night while he was on business, she actually, they made love. He's, she slept over and the sister freaked out. Like, why did you guys leave me here alone? She found out that she slept with a brother, but that's what people that fall in love and get married kind of do. News flash. So it's like chill sister, but she has no chill. So that she has no chill. She's telling these ghosts in the house because now she's getting haunted this creepy mansion by ghosts. So she's even more scared than when she lived with her father with the ghosts. So she's telling these ghosts, tell me something I need to know about my husband and the place I live in. And they tell her to go to this room and she finds out she hears noises from this room. She goes in this room and her husband and the sister are doing the dirty deeds together. And it's incestual warning bad stuff so she finds out not only is he making love with his sister but that he's killing off all these women that are rich from rich families that he marries so she's in bad trouble right bad, like bad 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 trouble back at home see the guy who was super good looking with the good job was best friends with her father who her father wanted her to marry He's playing da -da -da -da, Inspector Gadget, looking into that girl's father's death, finds out the last check he made was that guy, and he knew that her father didn't like that guy, so he's looking into it, finds these old newspaper clippings of him marrying these women, and there was this one story where when he was a kid, their, his mother went mysteriously dead. They found her dead body at the house and there's no one there to kill her but the kids, like little kids, that guy and his sister. And no one wanted to believe that they killed their own mother. But turns out this red creature I'm turning into, this red ghost, is that mother that they killed by getting this gouge in her head in a bathtub. It's like clue to the max. This plot's getting good, right? There's dead bodies being thrown into the clay weird wells where she found all this information in that suitcase in the basement. There's just all this crazy stuff going on, right? So he has this master plan, the guy doing Inspector Gadget for her father's sake, to go and find her and save her life. So she stops drinking the tea. The sister realizes she stopped drinking the tea and finds out that she saw them doing the nasty. And she's in real trouble now. I'm gonna get some pumpkin orange for the eyes right here, and I'm gonna color in them black later. Getting my favorite matte black eyeshadow. This is from the Spirit Board palette from Peachy Queen Cosmetics. Oh my gosh, so good. The color is called No. So when she's investigating all this stuff, she also finds out that yeah, her husband and the creepy sister are not only incestuous, but they killed their mother. And their whole plans this whole entire time was to marry these women. Well, it's mostly the sisters because she wants her brother all to herself, creepily enough. Marry these women, take their money, and he never sleeps with him. Only his creepy sister because they're both freaking weird. But he's kind of coming around and like trying to help her out and like discovers, oh wow, we're actually creepy. And like, it's like that moment when you realize that your family was a little dysfunctional once you grow up, when you're in your 30s, and then so going back to see your family is kind of weird, but you don't want to say anything and just go to therapy about it. It's like that to the max. So she not only finds that out, but 
The sister like goes off, right? She tries to kill the girl who's getting smart now. Right in time when that guy, her knight in shining armor, the doctor who's investigating the father's murder, comes over and tries to save her. So while this guy comes to visit and rest, tries to rescue her, he sees that they're getting cut and stabbed and all types of things. They go into like kind of a murderous rampage slightly and he uh, gets alone time with her and he's like, I need to take her to the doctor. But this girl, but the sister was like, the incestuous creepy sister's like, no, ain't gonna happen, not in my house. So she stabs that doctor, cute guy. It's just as all taps wrong. Makes me upset. And then she hands the stabby thing that she stabbed him with to her brother and like, you have to stab him now too if you're in this with me. We've been in this together our whole lives. And he's like, oh gosh. So he whispers to, she's like, you're a doctor, right? He's like, yeah. He's like, tell me where to stab you so you stay alive because I'm actually trying to help the girl that we're both in love with. So he stabs him. So he's kind of alive, but you don't ever find out what happens to him. So the murderous brother and sister, <laughs> the sister gets so mad that she can't have her brother to herself because he actually loves this girl now and doesn't want to murder women anymore because he was like murdering people he faked being in love with. But this is the actually one, this girl is one that sticks. Like he actually starts loving her, which is not good because it's against him and his sister's love life and plans. If I knew I was gonna be talking about sister and brother's love lives, oh my gosh. Anyways, so she's like, if I can't have you, you can't have this girl because I love you, brother. Um, I'm gonna stab you. So she stabs him not only in like his guts and stuff while he's burning all the papers that gets all of that girl's money to them. She stabs him in the freaking face and she goes on a rampage to kill not only him, but the one that he loves that girl. Oh. So she's like trying to find the doctor guy who somehow went down to that creepy well situation downstairs that was off limits. He's down there, so she goes down there to help him, but that lady follows and she gets this cleaver from under the floorboards in that weird well thing where they've dumped all the other women's bodies he was married off to in the red clay wells. And that cleaver was the one she used, her and her brother used to kill their mother together. Who's this red ghost thing I'm turning into. But this was caused by, and like, oh, I have this special for you. And she's trying to make a special killing plot, serial killer situation moment. But she's just a terrible person and I hate her guts. And I mean, how could you not hate her? That's what she was made for. That's her character, this role in this movie. So they get into this fight in, that other girl, it's like being an expert, expert level boss, fighting an expert level boss, and the blonde girl throughout the movie, who's dumb at first, and now has to attack this woman, who's tricked into marrying into this crazy family, uh, she's like a beginner with her cleaver. <laughs> so it isn't looking too pretty for her, but she's gonna try to kill her. So they go above, and it's called Crimson Peak because the snow uncovers the red clay and shows more. So the red clay looks like, from under the ground, looks like blood. That's why it's called Crimson Peak. That's why it's called this movie. They have a fight on Crimson Peak and she's like, oh, but I'm gonna win because I know something you don't know. There's someone here to help me. And she's like, you're alone. Who's here to help you? And you think she's, you're ta she's talking about that guy who came to save her that's down below that's there to save her. But no, she's talking about another ghost that she sees. And this lady sees the ghost too. And it's the ghost of the dead brother that they, she just murdered that they both were in love with. And the ghost, his ghost looked kind of lame. Like he was just, they just put baby powder on him with some blood and he had a knife wound to his face where the sister stabbed him in the face and stuff. I don't know why I wasn't that impressed with his ghost-like figure. It did surprise me though at first when I saw him. But he kind of looked lame compared to this ghost and the mother ghost was like, oh, so I want to turn into her so bad. So that ghost almost like distracts her enough to where she finally stabs her and kills her. I think, yeah. But you never find out what happens to that other guy. You never find out if she becomes a great writer. 
unless it's something to do with history that I know nothing about. I need some white dots. All right, now it's time to put on the wig. Thank you for listening to my rants, by the way, about this movie plot that was insane. Of course Guillermo del Toro made this plot. Who else? This is my wig from the Beetlejuice makeup. Let's put some black cream paint on here. Make it look like the gash is like extended into her head. And we gotta put some floofy floofs dangling on the side. Gotta contour some of this. Can't have my weave looking bad. Oh, here we go. And with that, we are completely done turning into this creepy ghost from the movie Crimson Peak. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and my long rant about the plot. This movie's plot was so insane. I did not expect it. I was here for the aesthetic and I was screaming at the TV more than I ever thought I would at any movie in my entire life. This was so interesting to watch and study. I hope you guys enjoyed. Now it's time for me to take this off. I need to shower like really bad. Leave me a comment down below on what other creepy movie characters you would love to see on this channel. Maybe I could watch the movie, rate it again. This is so much fun to do. Thank you guys for making my life like just so much fun because if it wasn't for you guys, I would have such a sad, boring life. I wouldn't be living my life to the fullest or have a dream job. So I really appreciate you, especially during this time, like when the world is going crazy. I'm trying to stay away from makeup remover wipes because I'm realizing how bad they are for your skin. So I love using, oh, this smells like cherry ice cream. This is the pharmacy melt away balm. I'm trying to use balms, oils, stuff like that because they work so much better and wow without harming your skin and tearing any or affecting any skin barriers and like these makeup eraser erasers watch wow can a makeup wipe do that that didn't even damage my skin that's insane i love cleansing oh it smells like cherry I love this and cleansing bombs together. This is like unstoppable. Man, I should be in a commercial for this. Wow. Makeup eraser, sponsor your girl. Kidding, kinda. I can't wait to watch more scary movies. I've been obsessed with watching Nuke's top five still here on YouTube. And it's been really inspiring me to turn into all the creepy things. We're gonna bring back Phantom Curiosities. I'm trying to do that once, at least once a month. I've been doing it twice recently a month, which is super exciting. You know me, I love the creepy stuff. Let's get more of this cherry Jubilee ice cream makeup melter. Wow, this is awesome. Where has this been all my life? Look at that. Holy Toledo. Dear Jeebus, please don't dye my skin red because I have important things and people to see. Well, not in person. Anyways, I should take a shower. Wow. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me and supporting this channel. Subscribe for more videos. I do two videos a week every Monday and Friday. Love you creators and I will see you in the next video. Bye.